What were those two years like in capsule form? Hell. I wasn't permitted to see her. I wasn't permitted to call her. I wasn't permitted to write to her. My last words to Jesse, I said, Daddy will see you on Wednesday, honey. And I never came Wednesday, and I never came the next Wednesday, and I never came for two years after that. The authorities would not even let me say to her, Jesse, Daddy can't come see you now. Not even that. If, in fact, she was hurt, uh, the protection of the victim is an important factor. Mike Rubinaccio was the one who successfully argued that Spiegel be denied contact with his child until the trial was over. That would take more than two years. There was some discussion as to whether or not as a result of his particular trade, uh, which was a psychologist, um, whether he would have an influence on the child that uh, might affect her ultimate testimony. Do you promise to tell the truth? You're shaking your head. Is that yes or no? Yeah. Mike yeah. Rubinaccio persuaded the court to allow Jessica to testify at her father's trial. He and the defense attorney questioned her on closed circuit television, which was shown in an open court. At the time, she was the youngest child ever to testify in a sexual abuse case in New Jersey. Why don't you tell me how Daddy hurt you? Tell me. He stuck what? His face in your birdie? Can you show me where? Show me where. Come on. Wait, I can't really see, sweetheart. Show me where. Right there? Who did that to you? My dad. The lawyer asked her, where is your birdie? Show me. And she lifted up her dress. Yes. How could a child do that, come up with that, if it wasn't true? The same way that that same child said to the judge, uh, my daddy did something bad and my mommy didn't tell me to say that. Can I ask you something? What? Did somebody ever tell you that daddy was sick in the brain? Yes. Who told you that? My mama. Oh, no. Some of the jurors we spoke with did say they felt Jessica may have been coached, and for them, that diminished the impact of her testimony. Larry says the allegations cost him dearly. The stigma of having been accused of it. When I went to the store, I would walk out and hear the whispering behind my back. Hi. Larry resigned his position as chairman of the psychology department at a local community college. His private patients left him, and his legal bills topped $100,000. It's just not fair. It isn't fair for the kids. Larry now counsels others who feel they've been wrongly token, accused, and he's recently finished a book about his experiences. You know, my own child, I didn't see her for over two years. Doug Besheroff wrote the afterword for Larry's book. He believes an increased awareness of child abuse has created a wave of public hysteria. False allegations of child abuse are a very serious problem because it misdirects resources. It means that child protective agencies have to go out on cases that turn out to be um, untrue. It's also very unfair to the parents involved because they have to take the time and the money to defend themselves. The child is a basket case. We've depleted all our savings and our college fund for our children at home. I'm not going to admit to something. I have not done it. I was accused of physically abusing my baby. Parents who feel they've been unjustly accused have formed an organization called VOCAL. It stands for Victims of Child Abuse Laws. It's in 44 states and its numbers are growing. I was accused falsely of sexually molesting my three and a half year old daughter. I was accused of the most vile and heinous crime a parent could possibly ever commit against any human being, much less a child. There are a lot of people that protest too much about their treatment. And there are a lot of people that uh, are abusing their kids. Tom Blattner is head of the New Jersey Division of Youth and Family Services. His agency is required by law to investigate every allegation of child abuse. And he is aggressively pursuing that mandate. The home in the United States is the most dangerous place for a child. 95 to 98 percent of child abuse occurs within the home by parents who are supposed to be loving these kids. And I think we have a, I think we have a, a ticking clock. Hotline 
hotline. Can I help you? When a call comes in, it may seem like the most innocent thing okay. in the world, and, you know, it's the most respectable person in the community. The next thing you know, it's just a unraveling story of horrors. And I don't know any other way to deal with this situation, as long as child abuse is occurring, than to just take every case as it comes and look into it in a reasonable manner. In the present situation, we've gone much too far. If 65% of all cases are closed, uh, we have a massive intrusion on families. Ultimately, you're talking about, do you, are, you, are you coming down on the side of children, or are you coming down on the side of protecting adults? And I think that, that um, we're real clear. We are trying to stand up for the kids. It was here at the Morris County Courthouse on January 16, 1986, that a jury found Larry Spiegel not guilty of sexual abuse. Two months later, in a family court hearing, Larry was awarded joint custody of Jessica. He called that decision an enormous victory for parents who feel their parental rights are violated when they are falsely accused of abusing their children. In the future, there will be regularly scheduled visits with his daughter private moments that may help them understand the past. The biggest regret is seeing my little girl having to cope with this and knowing that she will have to cope with it for the remainder of her life. She was separated from me without any idea of why, why, why her daddy didn't come to see her. Uh, the feeling of abandonment that she must have experienced, that, that to me is the tragedy. Yours and hers. Mine and hers, yeah. Why do we make future shine with tough acrylic? Because we know what your floor goes through in a day. Future stands up to any kind of traffic. Even messy spills. Future with clear acrylic. The tough shine for your high traffic floor. Flight 124, fly runway heading to 3000, right turn to 270. You are clear for takeoff. Introducing DuPont Certified Stain Master Carpet. Stain Master gives you a revolutionary new level of protection against stains and spills that's better than any other carpet you can buy today. Because you never know. Gentlemen, start your engine. New Stain Master from DuPont Carpet Fibers. The top of your TV should be more than just a shelf for your VCR, so Zenith designed a slim, new midsize that does just about everything but take up space. Zenith. Quality. How do you learn to operate a Zenith VCR? Easy. Our instruction tape shows you the way. Zenith. Quality. There's a new short bed pickup on the road. It's called Comanche Sport Truck. It's the kind of truck only Jeep could build. And at just $64.95, it's also the lowest price pickup built in America. Jeep Comanche Sport Truck. It's worth a look. On Give Me a Break, Nell's Holiday Crazy. I am this. <laughs> You again. Tiger Willows is going on the prowl. Matt gets Henry a date with... 56 women. Then on St. Elsewhere. Will Ehrlich win Lucy? That could go either way. And live to regret it? Wednesday. It will be a year of change. I was offered a promotion today. It would require a little more traveling. You do what's best for you. I want to do what's best for the family. And it will be a year of conflict. Come on now. You hit me now. That's right. That's right. Come on. The Extraordinary Lives of Ordinary People. A Year in the Life premieres Monday. Going out for the mail used to be one of the things we looked forward to every day. There might be a note from Aunt Martha or the latest from a friend who'd moved away, or a birthday card, something personal. 
with our own names written on the envelope in ink in a hand we could recognize. But all that's changed. What's in the mail now, especially at this time of the year, is stuff we never asked for, spewed out by machines and imprinted by computers that pretend to know us. Catalogs and come-ons and offers and catalogs and flyers and brochures and catalogs and coupons and computer mailings and catalogs. Lucky Severson, brave man, has gone out waiting in the torrent of junk mail, and he reports back with this view of all that stuff that's addressed, Dear Occupant. Switch her over to sex. 128 and 130. Turn 911. Turn them on. You can almost feel the tension here. What these men and women are doing can affect the lives of millions of Americans. If they let their guard down for even a minute, someone, somewhere, will get the wrong junk mail. This is a U.S. Postal Service bulk mail center, one of the biggest. Truth is, it's almost impossible to stop this kind of mail from coming to your house. And they know where you live. The entire file of addresses, some 89 million addresses are stored on IBM cards. And there's one address per card. Virtually all addresses in the country where sing of American households are on the list. Vince Giuliano's company is the largest mass mailer in the country. Each year, Advil sends out four and a half billion pieces of mail. That's billion, and that's nothing. Last year, Americans received so many pieces of junk mail, if they were placed end to end, it would stretch all the way to the moon and back 15 times. Roberta Manneker is with the Direct Marketing Association. It has grown enormously. It has really become a, a mainstream channel for the distribution of, of goods and services in America. It's acceptable, it's fashionable. And it's everywhere. Imagine what it would be like to lug it around day after day after day, like mailman Mike Surma in Berea, Ohio. Did your back ever get tired? Well, I've been ailing with back in trouble. I've been going to a chiropractor for the last six months. How many pieces of bulk mail do you think you've delivered in your lifetime? Oh, God. <laughs> I have the least idea, well, sir. Maybe, Tons. Maybe 500, 1,000, a million? I think about a ton of this stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a great effort just to stop junk mail from piling up all around you. My house here in Chicago is right next door to one that's going to be refurbished. It's vacant and has been for weeks, but the mailman keeps delivering junk mail there. I've asked him to stop. I've pleaded with him. But he says neither rain nor sleet nor vacant houses is going to stop him from delivering junk mail. It's become like Chinese water torture. Americans have always been number one at the technology of mass production. Mass hamburgers, mass cars, mass mail. We are clearly the technological Goliath of mass mailing. Imagine a computer-controlled press that churns out 20 feet of four-color junk mail in one second. This roll of paper may look like something in your home, but unlike bathroom tissue, it weighs 2,000 pounds, and they go through a roll of it every 30 minutes. And then they chop it, shuffle it, wrap it, and stack it. Not necessarily in that order. In some cases, there is so much junk mail, post office employees work right out of the company warehouse. We were surprised at the togetherness of mass mailers in the post office. It's almost as if they're working for the same boss. We netted about $30 million last year. Postmaster Dean joins. And you have to work really closely you have together. To work close or else together. Or if else. you didn't work close together, what would yeah. happen? Oh, a dilemma, probably. The mail's got to go. Without the revenue from junk mailers, the Postal Service might go broke. A first-class letter could cost a lot more. Revenues from bulk mailers account for 30% of the Postal Service's annual budget. That's why mail carriers might complain, but not too loudly. There's a lot more mail than I thought there ever possibly could be. Third-class mail, bulk business mail, not junk mail. Well, I think the postal term for it is not preferential business mail. This is bulk mail. It's not junk mail. No, junk mail is the wrong word to use. Why is that? Well, right. that's sort of slang. Slang? Yes, sir. Does it help that 
This, this uh, bulk mail is paying your uh, salary. Does that help change your attitude it's a little bit? It's known as bread and butter at, at the post office. They've worked together so closely, mail carriers often inform junk mailers whenever you change your address. They even tell them which side of the street they walk down first, so the junk mailers can pre-sort their deliveries for them. Remember when your junk mail was simply addressed, Dear Occupant? Now it has your full name, including your middle initial, even your sex. What they have done is rented a list with your name on it. And when they compare that list with another and maybe another, they can learn a lot about you and your neighbors. Probably how much money you make, what kind of car you can afford, your taste in clothes. And it's very likely that your name is on at least one list, according to ACLU lawyer Jerry Berman. Direct mailers are increasingly becoming very sophisticated at identifying each and every one of us. Our income patterns, our, the size of our households, what kind of cars we drive, our age, our, uh, our occupation. We put that information into a computer with a complex statistical analysis procedure to identify the unique neighborhood types in the country. If you have a zip code, Sam Barton has a pretty good idea who you are, what kind of money you make, your education. And we are all categorized under cute little headings like money and brains, furs and station wagons, bohemian mix. Let me give you mine. 60614. 60614. Bohemian mix. Mixture of uh, young up and coming professionals in their 20s, early 30s. His computer was right on about my neighborhood, so I gave him the zip codes of some famous Americans who might be interested to know what kind of neighborhood they live in. Walter Mondale, 20016. 20016. He's doing all right. Money and brains. Losing the presidential election has been very, very good to him. <laughs> okay, let's look at Jesse Jackson, 60649. Emergent minorities. That fits. Dan Rather, 10028. Tom Brokaw, 10021. Peter Jennings, 10024. These gentlemen all have selected different zip codes, but they're all classified in the urban Gold Coast, which again is the top of the line. So they're doing urban okay. dwelling. Doing very, very well. What are the chances that my name is not on the list somewhere? I would say the chances are zero. Psychologist Joseph Margolin says people sometimes actually like junk mail, maybe even need it to keep well, them company. Uh, there are a lot of isolated people in this country and in this world. Uh, a lot of people who are uh, eager to get some mail and don't have anybody to write to them. And at least you have something that the mailman drops every day. You get a lot of it, don't you? I surely do, an awful lot. Do you like it? Very much so. Really? <laughs> I enjoy reading because I don't get out any. Meanwhile, it just keeps coming. Junk. And Americans Junk. keep complaining about it. Junk. And sometimes we get carried away, like Clifford. He just loves to hate junk mail. At the present rate, there will be four times as much junk mail by the year 2000 as there is today. Vision's range top cookware by Corning withstands heat that turns ordinary saucepans into sauce. And unlike metal pans, they're perfect for the microwave. Vision's by Corning. It's visibly superior. Makes you think of kisses and hugs. Gotta get a gun, gotta get a gun. Everyone is full of love. Gotta get a gun, gotta get a gun, gotta get a gun. They have arrived at Sears, AT&T's new generation HD 5300 cordless phone with breakthrough technology that rivals traditional phone sound quality. And it's arrived with a Sears price of $169.99. And there's AT&T's most advanced trim line phone ever, the 1300, with speed dialing, volume control, and more, just $69.99. But get to Sears now before our newest arrivals. Make a quick departure. There's more for your life at Sears.
On Friday, cancel everything. Two super cop shows. Doing my job. Two hours of action. Think about that. Two all-new episodes. We got armed robbery. And murder. American dream. We can work this out so nobody gets hurt. Two of the hottest hits on TV. Miami Vice, followed by Crime Story, Friday. Saturday, Hunter and Dee Dee are taking the heat, tracking a deadly kidnapper. Will this mysterious killer make Hunter's day? You want to fight? I hope you do. Saturday. Before we leave you tonight, a couple of updates. Last week, we profiled Clint Eastwood, whose new movie, Heartbreak Ridge, opened across the country. The reviews were generally favorable, except for the Defense Department, which, after lending technical support to the production, withdrew its approval because it felt the film portrayed Marines as too violent and too profane. And the Democrats were true to form yesterday. Jim Wright, the congressman from Texas and the subject of our profile last week, has won unanimous approval from the Democratic majority as the next speaker of the House of Representatives. Mr. Wright had no opposition. That's our program for tonight. We won't be with you next Tuesday night, so we'll see you in two weeks on Tuesday, December 23rd. Good night. On Channel 4 News at 11, a presidential advisor and a ranking military officer plead the fifth during today's Foreign Affairs Committee meeting. We'll have details on that. And an industrial accident at the Surrey Nuclear Power Plant has left eight people injured. Join us for more on these stories and tomorrow's weather. Sunday, celebrate a heartwarming Christmas at our house. Merry Christmas. Then on Valerie, when Dad's grounded at home, life's a scream. I guess I can skip the aerobics this morning. And on Easy Street, are Eleanor and Quentin gone for good? Ding dong, the way she All right! Sunday.